what they go do with me now. I'm still a talk of the town. Don't need assistance, I'm poking them down. We turn the smiles into frowns. Gang hop out, then we clear on the What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Brianna Imani, and you're back with another Talk of the Town interview. And who do we have in the building Abby today? Abby Jasmine. We got my girl, Abby Jasmine, okay. in the building. My twin, honestly. We're do you today. see the material? Like, from the bucket hat to the white to the black to the black. We here with it. How you feeling? I feel good. It's a good day to have a good day. It definitely is a good day to have a good day. It's nice outside. We chilling. We vibing. Mm -hmm. So, we're going to start this off with a game. Okay. You're going to finish my sentences, but okay. I'm going to start them for you okay so example if i were to say my name is abby right <laughs> all right perfect just wanted to make sure we was okay, here okay 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 all right you ready yeah okay my go-to brunch order is um eggs and a bagel and grits and a mimosa wow you want to know what i thought you was gonna say what do you think i was gonna say? chicken and waffles no <laughs> I what you so say. like no. Very cliche answer. Yeah, I know. Yeah. yeah. All right. So your brunch order is like a breakfast order. Yeah. With a mimosa. With a mimosa. Okay. My friends would say that I am. Um, crazy, annoying, loud, talkative. Sounds like a good time. Yeah. This chapter of my life is called. Growth. Love that. If you want to keep me happy, don't. Um, don't. Come around me. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> if you want to keep me happy, yeah, don't come, don't around, come me. around me when I'm just in my funk. Like, just okay. leave me alone. Yeah. Okay, I understand that. All right. And the really most weak. underrated song on my playlist is. The most underrated song. Oh, Sexy Back by Justin Timberlake. That's. You my... think Sexy Back is underrated? Now it is. I never it's go to a party outdated. and hit play Sexy Back. Oh, girl, you don't be going with Sexy I'm not no. gonna lie. I went to some spot um, a few days ago called um, Friends and Lovers in Brooklyn. Okay, they definitely had that. They played it. They, played it. they had that on their rotation. That's my so type of party. I think you gotta go to like I guess the right spot. Yeah. But okay, so sexy back. I don't know. You got another one that you could give me? Let me underrated. Think. Underrated. Mm. I don't know. Underrated. Underrated. All right. What's up? What's the underrated song of yours that... Oh, an underrated song of mine, I would have to say FML by me. Okay, yeah. okay. If you want to impress me... If you want to impress me, you got to be yourself. Okay. I don't like that fake shit. Period. Okay. Okay. An artist I could listen to all day is. Oh, Frank Ocean. I love Frank Ocean. Love Frank Ocean. I love, Frank love Ocean. him. Okay. If I could only eat one meal for the rest of my life, it would be. A bagel. I love bagels. Really? Just, yes. A bagel? I love bagels. Freshly baked out the oven. Abby, that is not what I was expecting for you to say. I love bagels. I could eat like a sausage, egg, and cheese anytime. Bacon, egg, and cheese. I l but it has to be on a bagel. Okay. Plain bagel. Plain egg bagel, sesame bagel, everything <laughs> bagel. I even like, um, you ever had a French toast bagel? I have had a French okay, toast bagel. Those, those are slap. busting. Yeah. I love me an everything bagel. I like plain bagels. And French toast bagels are cool. That's the only sweet. They're interesting. And raisin. Um, what is it? Cinnamon raisin I don't bagels. I like raisins. I, like. I be picking um, the raisins on my shit. I like a good cinnamon raisin bagel. Yeah. Um, okay. My favorite song I wrote is... My favorite song that I wrote is probably, that's a good question, probably M.I.A. Oh, a, I like I that like that song. song. Yeah. Okay, okay. Um, and my biggest turnoff is? My biggest turnoff is being stink. Like, if you just stink, your body odor stink, your okay. feet stink, <laughs> your breath stink. <laughs> Your just head stink. stink, yeah, like I your wasn't attitude. Sure. Okay, and that's what I was about to say. I wasn't sure if you was like stink no, or stink, stink like, but all, both. Honestly, stink. Yeah, both. Like, you stink. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> if you stink, don't come around me. Yeah. Um, I can't do business with you if I can't do business with you if if you I can't do business with you if you just do too much talking and not enough action. Like, I need to see the fruits of your labor. Mm -hmm. Like, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. people will say all day, this is what I do, this is what I do. But 
you never Where seen is them do it? it. Yeah, right. Like, <laughs> you got to see what people are working with. I got to see it to right. believe it. Okay. And now the last one. Growing Pains is going to be... Amazing. Amazing. <laughs> we can't wait for <laughs> it. Growing Pains coming out on the 22nd. Yes. Very, very, very excited. We're definitely going to get into that. Before we do, I really just... I, I was looking forward to this conversation because I feel like... In a lot of ways, outside of just what we're wearing right mm-hmm. now, I can relate to a lot of the things that you talk about, a lot of things you sing about. I love that. And even in seeing your personality, you always seem to have like a good vibe. Um, so I'm very, very happy to have you here. First, also, I want to say happy Mother's Day to Marley's mommy. Thank you. I am a dog mom myself, so I know how we could get about our yeah, dogs. My um, child. How was your Mother's Day? I mean, Marley aside, but also like for your I mom. Had a, I had a good Mother's Day. Um, I spent it with my mom, but she just like she got her gifts and then she just went to sleep so <laughs> okay <laughs> so then i just i just took a nap uh, <laughs> that was i definitely was took it. a good nap on mother's day i had a good mother's day also yeah. um that's nice all right so now did you do you watch college hill the new one no i haven't but i've been seeing like clips. little snippets yeah. okay so there was something that happened recently with um jocelyn in new york I saw when new it. york said like her dog had passed away and, and jocelyn thought that like crying. yeah, yeah, yeah and yeah. jocelyn was like a dog is never that serious yeah, like yeah. i don't get how people a get dog like is that. that serious a dog is definitely that serious yeah. um do you feel like being a dog mom has like helped you in terms like learn anything about yourself or just like I definitely, no offense to people with kids, but I definitely see the parallels of, like, nurturing something. Absolutely. You know, like, obviously a dog isn't the same as having a kid because the kid, like, you have to have it for, like, 18 years. And then even after that, you got to take care of the kid. But dogs, I feel like, are way, like, I just learned how to nurture more Mm -hmm. and... I feel like one day it's it'll prepare me for like actually taking care of like a human. I completely agree. Yeah. I'm I'm here with you. I definitely yeah. agree. Shout out to Romeo. Shout out to Shout Marley. Out to Marley man. <laughs> so talk to me about um growing up because I know that both of your parents were musically inclined mm-hmm. and they were involved in the music industry. So talk to me about that and um how the way that they raised you with music led into you being where you are now yeah um I definitely think growing up I treated music more so like a chore or Mm. something that like I had to do because like my parents were like so musically inclined my dad was like the music director at my church and Mm -hmm. like people would see me growing up I would sing at church things like that Mm -hmm. and I felt like that was like kind of expected Mm -hmm. but um I was saying this the other day, like I kind of used music growing up as like a bargaining chip. Like whenever my parents would get tight at me, I'd be like, I right, bet I'm not song. doing this. I'm oh, like, oh, OK. Yeah, no, like, I'd be like, I'm not doing this shit uh-huh. anymore, you know. But as I grow, grew up, like I just felt like it was something that came the most natural to me. Mm-hmm. Like, so I definitely think that them like raising me like that helped okay so now you were singing in the church choir i was singing in the church choir i was in the church band Mm -hmm. um i played piano in the church band oh you was heavy on it he was definitely you was was letting him use you all the way okay glory love that for you (laughs) um so what was the reaction i mean your music isn't too like it's not too intense or too crazy when it comes to like sexual stuff, but yeah. it is considered to be like secular music. Yeah, it is. So, what was the reception of the music that you were making um, by your parents? Um, so my mom still does not listen to my music. Really? Yeah, I make I'm I make like a clean song or two, uh-huh. like so that she could listen to it. My dad loves my music; like he Very. listens to it all the time. Uh-huh. Like, I mean, he was he's he was in your song. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So I definitely got that. Okay, yeah, so yeah, she's yeah. not she's not on board yet. No, 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 no. Not but yet. But like she, that's just how she is. Mm-hmm. You know, like I'll get her one day. Mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. yeah. And you know what? I think the, a good thing about the music that you make is it's so versatile. So, I mean, I feel like there's just been something for every mood that yeah. I'm in. Like, I feel like 
even when it comes to the sound, I feel like there's so many different artists that I feel like, wow, like this song might give me Kehlani vibes. Mm-hmm. This song gives me Cash mm-hmm. Pays vibes. Um, and so I think that eventually there'll be something yeah. that, yeah, you know, yeah, that yeah. resonates with her. That she's yeah. like, okay, this is the one. Yeah. And now she likes a couple of them, but okay. like, she's not going to. It's not there. in rotation yeah, yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not yet. Okay. So talk to me about when you first realized, though, that this was something that you were going to do. Because you said that. It was something that you felt like was a chore. Mm -hmm. So when did it go from being a chore to being something that you actually were like dedicated and wanted to do? Um, I think it happened around maybe I had just turned 18. I moved out my house Mm -hmm. and I didn't really have any sense of direction. I was going to actually join like the Air Force. So, Mm. yeah, Mm. I can't picture me doing that at all. It was just something like. Like, my mom was just like, either you go to the Air Force or that's it. Mm-hmm. And I was I was like, well, I'm not going to the Air Force. Right, <laughs> so you figured. So, yeah, <laughs> so I'm going to get out of here. And then um, I have recorded a couple songs, and it wasn't something that, like, I was just having fun doing it, you know. And then I dropped a song, and um, the reception on it was, was good. Mm-hmm. So I just, I was like, okay, maybe I should, you know. Try it out, see what happens, mm-hmm. and then you know the journey has just been and crazy. I'm, I'm. This is not me. I'm gonna make an assumption, but I'm not saying that this is what was responsible for it. But you already had traction. You already had attention. Yes, that you was were very part of big it, on yeah. Vine. Yeah. Um. So a lot of people like were already clicking with your personality. Yeah. They liked your vibe. So you putting out music was like you already had a base. Yeah. And then you gave them something more yeah. to look forward to. Like, yeah. hey, I'm not just a one trick pony. Yeah, I got more I, things I that I could do. But even when you were making your vines, you were like rapping yeah, and stuff like that. So people yeah. kind of had an idea. People were always asking me had. to like do music and mm-hmm. stuff like that. And I was like, girl, shut up. Like, I'm not a rapper. I don't do none of that stuff. And now I look. Really? Like, yeah. I used to always tell people like, I'll never do that. Like, that's so surprising yeah. to me because I, felt, <laughs> you know, because I really felt like in watching it, like in watching your old vines, I'm like, it's so obvious that you would be doing what you're doing now. Yeah. It just wasn't something like. I couldn't tell you what I wanted to do. Like, even mm. growing up, like, I used to want to be, like, I used to want to do random shit, like, be, like, a psychologist mm-hmm. and shit like that. Like, I just, I don't know. It was just something that never crossed my mind, I guess. Mm-hmm. Even even when I was doing the Vine stuff, like, I never really thought about, um, like, how I could monetize this. or how, I just like making videos. Like, right. I just like making people laugh. Like, that type of thing, you know? And it worked out. It did. It, it worked out really well. So, at what point did you start trusting your process? I would say... I would say after... Um, I would say around 2019, when I was working on um, my last project, Who Cares? Mm-hmm. I was just really locked in and I just, that's when I kind of figured out like how I wanted to do things, like how I wanted to present myself, how I wanted my music to sound, how I wanted to look, Mm -hmm. you know. Um, It was definitely during that time just being locked in the studio with my producers and just really creating something from the ground up and making it all feel like super cohesive. This Mm -hmm. was like, that was something I was like, all right, like, okay. Mm -hmm. pen game getting a little better you know like yeah yes um because when i was listening to um trap mom the trap mom is good it's 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 okay don't don't do that (laughs) i love the humbleness but like trap mom is good i feel like it's fun it's vibey yeah um even still on there there's different like different moves that you can get Mm -hmm. from the songs but the difference between trap mom to me and like who cares it's like with trap mom, it's like, okay, I can rap and I say I'm good. Yeah. So that's what I'm doing. Yeah. But who cares? It's like, no, I put everything yeah, into this. I like, did. you're going to yeah. feel what I have to say. And I'm also, I got bars. Yeah. Like, it, it, it all came together very, very well. Yes, I um, so I definitely see the growth in that. Thank you. Now, you came from Staten Island. Staten Island. Right? Yep. How did you feel like, did you feel like, you got support from your city. Was there support to give? Like, what is life like in Staten Island? I, I, oh, okay. Well, that's like a that's part a, okay, of question. Yeah. Okay, so life in Staten Island, um, I always felt like it was now, like after I left Staten Island and like moved out and like branched out, mm-hmm. I kind of looked at it as a bubble. Like 
it's really like its own little thing. It's like a snow globe in a sense. You know what I'm yeah. saying? It's just like they do their own thing. They got their own. But it's the culture, I feel like, is still similar to like out here, Brooklyn. Mm. Not too much. <laughs> but mm. like we got the same slang. Like we, we talk like how y'all speak. Like we it's. It's kind of the same in that sense, but only thing is we got to take the ferry. I was telling Cleo when she came here, like, I literally don't know anybody that's from Staten Island. Now, I guess I know you two. Yeah. No. <laughs> but at the time, I was like, what is even in Staten Island to do? Yeah. And she she told, she told me about myself. She was like, don't sleep with Staten Island. Yeah, you know, Staten we got Island stuff got, going Staten on. Staten Island got some talent. You know what I'm saying? Like, we out here. Um, I just feel like... And I, I will say this, they support who comes from there. Like, mm. like I do get a lot of support from, like, people I went to high school with, mm-hmm. just people overall, like, on Staten Island mm-hmm. that know about me. I do get a lot of support from them. So okay. I'm not going to, like, downplay that, but... Yeah, you got to come to Staten Island. You ever took the ferry? Yes, I have taken okay. the ferry. Um, but, like, it was only once. And I had, like, a... It was, like, my school did some kind of, like, community service day type y'all of thing. Y'all went to Staten Island? Yes, this was around... Um, Hurricane Sandy. Okay, yeah, they got hit So, yeah, hard, so yeah. we went over there and we were, like, canvassing the neighborhoods yeah. and all that kind of stuff. But I never really experienced, like, a day-to-day life yeah. in Staten Island to let's know what it really Island. is. I'll take all right, you. let's go to Staten Island. I don't know where I'm going to take all you. All right, we're going to have somewhere. a day in Staten Island with Abby Jasmine. Okay. Stay tuned. Okay. Um. So, did you know Cleo yeah. growing up? Not growing up, but, like, we knew of each other. Mm-hmm. But, like, we... I didn't really, like, start... Linking with Cleo until maybe like 2017, 2018. Okay. But like we, it's small. So like we all Facebook, like we was all friends on Facebook, mm-hmm, that type mm-hmm, of thing. Mm-hmm. So. Cause y'all kind of have a, I'm not going to say like a, well, I will say like a similar like um, online personality, but also making music yeah. on the back end. I saw y'all linked up at Rolling Loud. Yeah, I was like, like okay. She's, love. She's I love sweet. seeing the girls sweet. together. Yeah. Yes, definitely love seeing the girls together. And you have a lot of like female cosigns. A lot of the ladies really fuck with you. I also saw you with Tia Corinne. Yeah, that's my love girl. her. Love yeah, her. y'all y'all have like similar vibes yeah. in my opinion. Yeah. Never met her yet, but y'all have similar vibes. Yeah. How do you feel about the ladies in the upcoming music space right now? I think everybody's doing their thing. I try I try to like be super tapped in, but sometimes I just get caught up in my own little world. But I really love what um Maya the Dawn is doing mm-hmm. right now. Yeah. With Brooke. Mm-hmm. Um, who else? Tia, obviously. Um do you listen to from R and B standpoint, like Journey Montana? Of course, of course. Love of her. Course. I love Shout Journey. out to Journey. Yes, yes, yes. yes, yes. I was just we love her yesterday. Too. That's my girl. We um, have a song together. Yes, I love. Yeah. I really, really love Journey. Um, she just had a video shoot yesterday. It was yesterday. After. I was supposed to go, but my car was in the shop. So. Isn't that the worst? I yeah. feel like every time I feel like life is actually like doing what it needs to do, yeah, I have a car issue. Bullshit. It's yeah. always a car issue. Um. Okay. So. How do you feel about the way that your music has been received thus far? I oh. I genuinely enjoy looking at the reception. Mm-hmm. Like I love looking. I like reading any type of review, even the reviews that people are like, well, you could have did better on this one. You know, it's not my favorite. Like, cool. But I think the reception so far has been like overall very positive. Mm -hmm. And that just motivates me to keep going because like, even even when, when somebody says like oh this is this is eh you know mm-hmm. that also motivates me to keep going because like all right now I gotta yeah now you're I gotta taking you wrong like and I think that that's something that's so important being receptive yeah. to like what you hear sometimes people just be talking out their ass Absolutely. talking just because they know how yeah. but um, a lot of times what people say are is very constructive yeah um, do you read comments. Uh, it depends. Sometimes oh I, sometimes I do. Sometimes I don't. Um, like if something of mine goes like viral, like I've been viral on TikTok a couple mm-hmm, times mm-hmm. when I did the um on the radar. I did not look through those comments because those kids on TikTok are mean as hell. Wow, but when I did look at, I did look at some of them, 
and a lot of them were nice. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. Yeah. I was like, that's but crazy. But some of them they were, were really fucking... mean. But like, I just take that one hater because like, I don't have a lot of haters in my day to day life. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, people don't come up to me like, "Yo, I hate you. You suck." You know? <laughs> so like, I just take that one I'm person. I'm not. like, all right, I'm gonna let you fuel me for a little bit. You know, go to the studio. And you know what? When you really look at who's the people behind the pages, they got like one follower Absolutely. following five thousand. They're so like irrelevant that yeah. it's just like they want to say. They want to go against the grain and say the opposite of what other people are saying. It has nothing to do with you. So what are your thoughts on just like the R&B space today? You know, like it's an ongoing conversation about whether or not R&B is dead. Um, So as an R&B artist, how do you feel about that conversation? Um, Well, I'll say this one time right before I dropped Who Cares, um, like I was talking with. At the time, I was signed to Cinematic, and I was talking to them, and I was like, listen, I want to be, like, an R&B artist. Like, mm-hmm. I don't really want to rap, for mm-hmm. real. Like, I could sing, like, I'd rather sing, you know? Mm-hmm. And um, somebody told me, they were like, listen, r and is dead. It's never coming back. And I was like, what? for real? But at the time, like, nobody was really, like, coming up in that space, and then... That year, LMA had booed up and mm-hmm. it had gone like number one or some shit mm-hmm. like that. So I was like, okay. I'm so not what gonna, was said? Yeah, I'm like, I'm what not going to listen to what nobody has to say. I'm just going to do me, you know? Mm-hmm. But I feel like the R&B space is constantly changing. Mm-hmm. And even, you could even hear, like, R&B will never die because the elements of R&B are always around, you know? Like, right. you even hear rappers, like, doing, like, melodies and stuff like that. Rappers got R&B songs, too. Right. You know? So, I don't think I don't think R&B could ever die. You can't kill something that has so much, um, you know, um, shit. I don't have the words you're looking for, but, but you know I will piggyback saying, off of what you're saying by saying I think it's so insane for R and B as a whole genre to yeah. be dead when yeah. you have so many subgenres within That's it. That's what I was yeah. And so I'm like, that I don't have the word, for. but yes. like I I get exactly what you're saying because like another conversation that's happened that's being had right now is about drill and people are arguing is drill dead. And I feel like not to say that I think it is, mm-hmm. but that's more of an understandable conversation to have because it's just a subgenre of rap. Of rap. You want to say rap is dead because yeah. you can have a different a subgenre just appear out of right. nowhere where right. people are rapping like we right. never heard before. Right. Um, but I think that with R and B, we don't have much of like the nineties, eight like no, that old anymore. school type yeah. of R and B. Like there's no guy groups. There's like very little like girl groups. Shout out to Flo. I was love gonna them. say Flo, yeah. Flo, Flo, Flo. Yeah, definitely yeah. love them. But there aren't really as many as there were before. So I can see a certain era of R and B being dead, but not the whole see, thing. I can see that too. Yeah. Um, so who are like some artists that you would like to work with? You don't have a lot of like features. I don't because because <laughs> most of the time, like I'll do the song and then the song will be completely done. Like I don't really leave opens. I just go in the studio and I'll just finish do the whole thing. song. Yeah. And then by the time I'm like, do y'all hear something on this? It's time for the song to come out. So yeah. Um, I don't know. I really want to work with, I really want to work with Bia. I love Bia. Yeah. I love Bia. I love Victoria Monet. She's Ooh, one of my Oh, okay. She my just girl. dropped a bop. She I haven't just dropped heard it. a bop. Um, what is it called? Is it called Party 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 Favors? Part something. She dropped Where did she drop it. She just dropped it and it, with the visual too. Really? Yes. It get, after we oh, get I off, I'm a, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna try to like it really, really good. I love her. Yeah, she she's vibe. Yeah. Okay, so Victoria Monet, Bia. Um, who else? I really I really, really, really want to get in the studio with Kay Trinata. Mm. I love Kay Trinata. Yes, love Kay Trinata too. Um, okay, that's a good one. Yeah. I wasn't expecting you to say that. Yeah. I like that. That's that Kay versatility. Yeah. Uh huh. Anybody else? Mm. Any guy? Well, you said say, Kay Trinata. Any guys? Let me think. Probably. Okay, Future is always, he's always been on my bucket list. I love Future. Okay. That's, that's my toxic king. But um, <laughs> no, I also say <laughs> Lucky Day, too. I love Lucky Day. I love, mm-hmm. I just love um, all their music. It's just so good. Yeah, Lucky it Day is. is I love it really Day. is. So, you know, you you touch briefly on um, your experience with Cinematic. And I know that Growing Pains is literally going to be your first independent Woo! album. So, so, 
feel so excited for you. Um, so how important to you is your independence in the music industry? Um, I'd say it's it's pretty independent uh, important <laughs> because I just feel like being independent, you kind of have the space to do whatever you want. It's a blessing and a curse mm-hmm. because like I said, you can do whatever you want and sometimes what you want to do is not necessarily um, beneficial, mm-hmm. but um, I like having the freedom to like move how I want to. Um, I've been definitely meeting a lot of a lot more people. Um, I'd say like when I was with the label, I didn't really um, reach out to people that much because, you know, you have somebody that's kind of the liaison. That right. Will, do the speaking for you in the sense, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, but now I, I've just been meeting so many people. I've been going to writing camps. I've been um, just meeting all these new creatives that I probably would have never met if I was still signed because I was in that little bubble. Right. And just, um, and just really, like, kind of complacent a little bit, you mm-hmm. know? Mm-hmm. And that's the worst place you can be is complacent because... Yep. There's no, there's no really room for growth. It's just like, all right, I'm here. Cool. This is never yep. going to change. I get whatever I want, you know, but now, now actually having to work for it, it makes all the fruits of your labor kind of like 10 times better. You know? Yeah. I mean, I have been having this conversation basically um, all week, meaning like last week into this one, because I know we just started, but about how I have been very complacent in a lot of different areas. And I was saying the exact same thing. It limits your growth a lot. And Absolutely. sometimes you don't realize how how much the complacency may settle in because mm-hmm. you may just feel like you're comfortable and you're happy with what you're yeah. doing. But a lot of the times it's like, no, you're not giving your, you're starving yourself of the opportunity yes. to do more. Yes. So definitely happy for you that you were able to identify that yeah. and move beyond it. Um, you also talked about just now um, doing the writer camps. I know you were a part yeah. of Abby's writer camp. Yeah, Shout out to was. Abby. We love her. Love her. Um, and then you said that from there stem like a collective of women that you yes. all started like writing together and yes. working together. How's that going? Okay, so that camp, I didn't even really know what to expect from that camp. She just asked me to like come in and like talk to the girls. So I'm like, all right, whatever, cool. Mm-hmm. And um, I had walked in the first day, and there was this girl. Her name is Janelle, Janelle Mac, mm-hmm. and she was sitting in the corner. And she was like, "Girl, I've been waiting to meet you, like literally for so long." Aww. And I was like, "Really?" Like <laughs> me? Like okay? She's like, "Yeah, girl, I got songs that I've written for you. All that. Like I've I knew the universe would like put us in each other's paths. And since then, like me and her, like we." we're like this, like we write together. That's so nice. She's written on my new album. I've met um, this other girl, Davy, that she introduced me to um, Jay, who's mm-hmm. the producer who did most of the production and the mixing and mastering for my album. Okay. So um, that writer's camp actually stemmed like a lot. I've been able to do my own writer's camps. We just did one maybe like two three weeks ago mm-hmm. um in jersey oh that's dope that was it was interesting uh, it not was inter- interesting no but interesting. you know in when a- somebody says interesting it's because that's like a pc word no it was interesting in <laughs> in a good way okay. I, I learned a lot just about how um like other artists writer ca- writers camps are done mm-hmm. um i realized that most uh most artists do not show up to their writers camps mm, so they were kind of surprised to see me there mm. <laughs> and they were kind of surprised to like get get my feedback in real time like mm-hmm. i had to go into one of the rooms like they wrote a song for me and i had to go in and be like like oh you wasn't it. feeling it yeah like i but, mean but that's what they need to hear and, that's and, what they're there for and that's another thing too like i don't like to waste people's time mm-hmm. that's my biggest thing like if we're gonna be in the studio and, and we're gonna work on something of mine like i want us all to be on the same page collectively i want us to also learn from each other like see what everybody can bring mm-hmm. you know so um that was definitely an experience i would definitely do it again um maybe on a smaller scale because okay it was so many rooms. There was like three rooms and I had to like It was bounce. a lot to bounce yeah, into. Yeah. I, I feel that. I was overwhelmed, but... But you did it. Yeah, Abby it for the people. Cool. That's cool. that's actually really dope it because I don't really see a lot of artists doing stuff like, like giving 
um, aspiring artists like opportunities to work with them and like kind of like build their craft. So that's, that's really nice that you people miss out on a lot of good talent by um, just not being open to work with people, mm -hmm. you know, like. I was I was like that for like a long time. It's like, all right, I got my producers. I got I know how to write. Cool. I don't need to work with anybody else. But you really do like, especially if you want to get farther in your craft. Like you have to have new sounds and new energies around you. You know. Mm -hmm. So now, when you talk about like someone writing on your project or collaborating on a project, how like what goes into that? What does that process look like? Um, when it comes to writing collaboratively? Um, okay, so usually what I'll do is we'll pick out a beat and then I'll go in and I'll do some like melody references. If anybody else has some melody ideas, like they'll go in and do them and mm -hmm. then we kind of just piece everything together mm -hmm. and then we'll sit and write to the melody and then that's pretty much it. Um, usually it involves some sort of like group note google doc mm -hmm. and we're all just typing away mm -hmm. it probably looks like to everybody else it'll look like bullshit right but, <laughs> but y'all know and yeah, that's all like, that matters we, we get it like so how do you feel about the conversations that are had when it comes to like ghost writing and people talking about like people who write their music versus people who don't what is your standpoint on that for one and two how do you feel about people that have stuff to say about that um, one, most of the people who have things to say about ghostwriters and things like that aren't really in the music industry. Nine times out of 10, I don't, a lot of the opinions I see like on Twitter and things yep. like that, like y'all don't even know the half of this stuff. Like your favorite artist has a ghostwriter. Literally. Favorite. That was what I was going to yeah, say. Yeah. So, um, I don't, I think everybody needs a job. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like there, there's a job for everybody. So if the singer just wants to sing, let the singer sing and then let the writers write, you mm -hmm. know, like me personally, I like to be involved in what I say, mm -hmm. but, um, I don't care if somebody has a ghostwriter. Yeah. Like, that doesn't, that doesn't. I mean, the only time that it really like, for me, I feel like. A singer singing and a writer writing is what establishes like a performer from an artist, right. I would say. I think as long as you have some kind of involvement in what is being written mm -hmm. and it's true to your sound, your voice and like yes, what you would say, yes. then it, it, if somebody can articulate it in a way that you may have not been able to or make it sound a mm -hmm. different way, I don't really think that there's anything wrong with that. I feel like there's a very negative stigma that comes behind ghostwriting. Yeah. But as you said, some of your favorite artists literally have ghostwriters. I too. just watched, um, you seen the Whitney Houston movie? Not yet. Did well, you, not you the it? newest one. Yeah. Yeah, no, not yet, not yet. It's, it's on Netflix, first mm -hmm. of all. You gotta watch it. I will. But um, <laughs> the whole, like, there was a whole premise of the movie where um, the guy that she was signed to, I forget his name, he was like, do you write? And she was like, no, I just sing. Mm -hmm. And he would just play her records. And like, if she felt it, if she felt like she wanted to sing it, then she would sing it. Mm -hmm. And like, that's cool. Like, like and I she's said, li like the literally biggest, a legend. Right. <laughs> and she didn't really, you know, write. But like, that's that doesn't take away from everything that like her legacy or anything that she's done, you know. I completely agree. OK, very well said. Um, So we touched on it real quick and then kind of got off track that's my fault sorry no, my mom I, it's be okay. old I'm way I'm so like I will <laughs> I'll be talk everywhere you in yeah. um but let's talk about this new project that okay. is coming out Woo. once again May 22nd yes. make sure that y'all tune in um what are the vibes what can we expect from <laughs> from your newest project um i'd say you can expect um Similar to my last projects, like, I don't like to just stay on one genre sound. Like, I like to bounce around a little bit. So mm -hmm. you can definitely, I feel like there's something there for everybody, you know? Like, yeah, um, great writing. I had a lot of help this time. So okay. um, usually, like, when I write and do things, like, by myself, like, I'm the only person that'll kind of critique it you mm -hmm, know but mm -hmm. now I had people that were really just trying to help me get the best um project possible you know mm -hmm. so 
um you can just expect a lot of good music <laughs> okay well as expected that's no surprise now talk about your cover art because your cover art gave me very much like alicia cara here okay. vibes don't know if that was the intention no um but it that's like what it gave me um now when you put out like the documentary style trailer and mm -hmm. stuff that didn't give me that same vibe mm -hmm. But I I want to know, like, what is the significance of the picture with you sitting down holding that cake? I think, okay, so I, I knew that I wanted to do something um, that symbolized growth. And I felt like one of the biggest things that everybody can relate to or that symbolizes growth, in my opinion, is, is your birthday. Mm -hmm. Like you're another year older another year wiser so i definitely wanted to use like the birthday theme like a sad birthday though because like you know there's always like that melancholy kind of feeling you Absolutely. know when it comes like my birthday's next month and i'm like ah shit like I'm, my birthday was last month and i was like oh yeah, shit it's like, ah, i'm older <laughs> like what the what am i doing mm -hmm. but um yeah, that was that was the biggest thing. It was just something that symbolized growth to me. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, and I also like I kind of had the idea of it coming coming out around this time too, so around my birthday. So like that was like a little bit. Of okay, birthday. wait. So when's your birthday? June second. June. Okay, so that yeah, is that is pretty yeah. close to your birthday. Okay, so we are going to okay first. Any features that we can look forward to that you're willing to spill or any, like, tea on the project? Okay, so I have um, some videos coming. I've been, you know, we've been working on that. Mm -hmm. um, I have a feature from Fergie Baby. Have you heard of oh, Fergie Baby? Oh, of course. Okay, yeah, we okay, love okay. Fergie. All right, all right, Absolutely. All right. Yeah, we love Fergie. Fergie's mm -hmm. dope. Um, Okay, and so Fergie on a project. Fergie Shout out to project. Fergie. I got um, Alex Molly. She's really dope. Um, okay. She's from, I think she's from Brooklyn, but she's she's really dope. You should tap in if you haven't. Okay, is yeah. she R&B? Yeah, she's like very okay. r &B. Ooh, okay, and, Alex um, Molly. Yeah, I have, I have some other features too, but um, those are like the two that I'm like very excited about. Okay, okay. So now we're going to get into more of like the personal side. Okay. Um, you know, this month is a very important month. It's Mental Health Awareness Month. Is it? Yes, Okay, it I is. wasn't aware. Yes, it definitely <laughs> is. Well, <laughs> yes, so we are in Mental Health Awareness Month, and I know that you have been very open about um, things that you've overcome, such as, like, overthinking. Yes, and anxiety. just anxiety. Right. Ugh. Once again, things that I can definitely relate to. Yeah. Um, how are you? Let's I'm, start there. How are you feeling? I'm alive. And that is the most important thing. I think just getting up and showing up for yourself mm -hmm. is one of the things that is just the most important. Um, I've been a little anxious, but it's just because like the project is coming out. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's a lot of pressure on me. But overall, I'm doing I'm doing good. I'm I'm feeling good. That's good to hear. Yeah. That's very good to hear. Um, like I said, that anxiety and overthinking are both things that like I struggled and still do struggle yes. with now. Um, and I think it's good that you said that you know your anxiety is something right now that you know it's kind of natural. You have an upcoming project, yes. like, and I think it's always important to separate like your anxiety from just being anxious because mm -hmm. sometimes like being anxious is a natural feeling. Yes. you know, like Every, you have something very it. big yes. coming up, so it's natural for you to feel anxious. But yes. I'm happy that you are in a good space. I'm in a great space. That is so good to hear. Um, how would you say, um, or what would you say helped you get to where you are now, especially like you? know you're around a lot of different energies you're yeah. you are like touching hands with a lot of different people having conversations with a lot of different people how have you not only maintained but improved your mental health um throughout that process I would say a lot of it is just kind of just going out there and doing it you know like I was I was home a lot of times you know just by myself and even when it came to like vine and making music like i wasn't really like the outgoing type like that mm -hmm. um now i kind of have to force myself to like go up to people and be like hey like my name's abby you know mm -hmm. like that 
And um, even when I meet a lot of people and I'm around a lot of different energies, I always give myself time to decompress. So whether I'm at a party, I'm at an event, I'm at the studio, I always try to take time to just be alone, whether Mm -hmm. that's like going to the bathroom and just like. Yeah, me time. Very important. Like you just have to take a second to breathe most of the time. Mm -hmm. And so something I was thinking about the other day um, was Summer Walker. Yeah. Because she is very open about like her social anxiety. Yeah. Um, but people often get on her about like how she is on social media yeah. versus like how she is on stage. Right. Some people feel like she knows what she's like at this point it's like you're a celebrity you have these shows for a reason you should be putting on other people feel like well y'all chose to make her famous and you knew exactly what you were getting you know i do as well so i was gonna ask you what your perspective on that is and like do you think it's realistic for people to expect people who are struggling with things mentally to like automatically break through them just because they're they they become famous um no i don't (laughs) i think i think that um yeah i think like you said like a lot of times like people are choosing these people to become famous and a lot of times it's nowadays it's like kind of overnight right yeah Like, like you could wake up one day like just in your crib and then next thing you know like ice spice you're at the met gala you literally know? like those things in a year those things don't it doesn't i don't know i don't i just don't think that those things and those feelings go away overnight mm-hmm. you know like after a while i'm sure it gets easier and easier and easier but you know and i'm sure there's like a level of like I guess, like, adaptation, I'll say, for lack of better words, where it's, like, you have to get used to, like, to what you said, like, it happens, sometimes it can really happen overnight, so it's, like, just because I'm famous now, it doesn't mean that I'm not still dealing with the things, like, you know, I've been dealing with, um, also, but I, damn, I lost my train of thought because you pulled out the Gatorade and I I'm thought so about, no, 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 no. It's not even about that. You can drink whatever you want. But I thought about something that I saw you talking about with the electrolyte. Oh, you like that? I love that. I love that because. Hold on. Let me give them the backstory before okay, you guys, go into give them, it. Give All them right. backstory. Give them backstory. So this is my, listen. Free game right this here, This is honestly. free game. Mm-hmm. If y'all want to take this idea, take it, run, run across the world with it. All right? Boom. Be fast because I might do it first. You out here, <laughs> you getting drunk. So backstory. I was at a party and there was Casamigos involved and there was no chaser. So I'm like, ah, shit, no chaser, Casamigos. I'm going to wake up with a hangover. But I did have Gatorade. <laughs> so boom, we need, and I'll tell you this, I mixed the Casamigos with the Gatorade. You could say it's nasty. You could say it's disgusting. I don't care. But I woke up the next morning and I did not have a hangover. So we need an alcoholic beverage that hydrates you but gets you lit at the same time. I call it Electrolit. The name is a work in progress. You could change it, but the idea is there. The foundation's there. That was like a mini infomercial right yeah. there. Like, you sold it. Honestly, like, I'm somebody that <laughs> I could drink, I could take two shots and the next morning. I'm like, I could definitely tell that, like, I drank last night. So I was like, wow, not only is that a great idea, I hate that you're just giving it up I like know. that. I don't have the time. <laughs> it, because it's such a great idea. Um, so, how do you balance, like, getting lit? Um, you smoke. I I dabble now. Okay, now yeah. you dabble. Okay, wow, yeah. that's good. Yeah. Um, so you dabble. How do you maintain like your? I don't know what to call it, like liquor, weed, all of that, while you're in these social settings where it plays such a big part. Right. Um. So as of late, I haven't really been smoking or drinking like that just because I've been so busy and like... You've been in grind mode. You have to have time to do those things. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Like, I don't have time to like physically like... Y'all see when I came in here, like that was... This is about to be the first time I smoke all day, like in like two days. So um, I just try to... I try to balance it out, mm-hmm. you know? Like if I feel myself getting too lit, I'm just going to leave. But... Um, 
when I'm out and about, like, I'll have, like, one drink, one blunt, that type of thing. Like, mm. I don't need to be too lit. Like, I'm getting old, so. No, heavy <laughs> yeah, on the getting body old. Is, yeah, my body does not um, process those things the way that it used to. And I could just go out and drink a whole bottle of Hennessy. I can't even right. touch Hennessy no, no more. No, you have posted something with your friends, and y'all was like, this is my first shot. This is my last shot. First shot Patron, last shot Henny. I was like, <laughs> what is happening right now? Like, it's no way. It's no way that I would even be able to think about doing that. So, yeah. yeah. Some, I will I will say, <laughs> sometimes if I go out, though, like, I'll have, like, a shot of tequila. And then, like, towards the end of the night, I might end it off with some Hennessy just because I'm feeling a just little. Just for a little razzle-dazzle. Yeah, a little, little sprinkle. A little sprinkle <laughs> of Hennessy. That is so crazy to me. <laughs> a little sprinkle of Hennessy. That hasn't caught up with me yet, though, but I, I know it will. It Don't will. say that. Knock on wood. We yeah, no, it, it will, though. Um, so in terms of, like, your social life in, uh, in general, do you feel like you have, like, do you have a lot of friends that you, like, grew up with? Do you have a lot of, like, industry friends? How would you say, like, your friends are made up? Um, most of my friends are my team. So, like, my okay. manager, like, we're literally best friends. That's my son. Love like, that. Yeah, what's up, gang? What's up? <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, like, everybody I work with is kind of, like, um, they're all family. So, like, we hang out a lot. Like, mm -hmm. we go out. We have drinks. We do dinner. Um yeah, that type of thing. Like I like I like creating family environments, you know? Like I like, like things and more intimate. Yeah, than, I like things to feel like natural. Mm -hmm. Um you know, I do have like industry friends and stuff like that, but um I feel like I'm like the going out friend though. Like you know how you have friends mm. that like Okay. You got some friends that you like text when you feel some type of way. You have some like I'm like a going out friend most of the time. Like but with my friend group, like I I'm just I'm more present. I wouldn't even like you don't strike me as the going out friend. Really? I feel like if anything, you would be like the versatile friend. Cause I, I can't lie. Okay, I'll that. take that. I'll take that. Yeah, because I definitely have like a couple of like going out friends, yeah. but most of like my friends' friends are like the going out friends, uh yeah. come out with my family friends, yeah. the we could just stay in a crib, chill, yeah. do whatever um, friends. Yeah. So I'd say that. You, that's yeah, because you yeah. give me a, like a chill. Because I do like, like to be in a house too. Like, yeah. I like to, like, let's just chill, smoke one, watch TV, mm -hmm. like, or like, let's go out, let's go to dinner. Yeah. Right. I'm like a go out to dinner friend too, though. Okay. okay. See, I, you're I, versatile, just yeah, like, I like music. To eat. I like to eat. Um, so now let's talk about your fashion sense because okay. you have a very unique fashion sense. Okay. Love it. Okay. I feel like you change your hair, like you change your All underwear. I feel like every time, like I always All see you with a different hair color. Um, how would you describe your style if you had to describe it? I would say my style is just overall, I like to be comfortable. Like, I just like to be super cozy. So I just wear anything. So whether that's, like, jeans, like, what I got on now, like, I just like to be comfortable. Like, mm -hmm. So I would just describe it as cozy fly. Cozy fly. Okay, yeah. like that. Um, do you have a favorite brand? Shout out to Tier, by the way. Black owned business. I love Tier. Love Tier. Um... My favorite brand right now, though, I really like Subi. I love their jeans. They're the they're probably the only brand that I get jeans from, just because I feel like their jeans are just you could just wear them like okay all the Subi time. On, I feel like all the as time. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um. So now, what would you say is like something that people don't know about you or something that people would be surprised to hear about you? Um, I don't know if this is something that like people know, but I'm a very private person. Like mm. I when I was like on Vine and Twitter, like like when I started mm -hmm. I was very like out in the open like I tweet all my feelings mm -hmm. that type of thing and the older I get the more I realize I don't like people in my business yeah I felt that um which is kind of like a blessing and a curse for the career occupation that I chose because mm -hmm. people want to know you people right. want to know like what you're doing what you're about and I'm just the older I get the more I just 
like to keep things that I love close to me and mm-hmm. not really want to. Maybe that's selfish, but I just don't like no, sharing. I understand it. Sharing certain things with the world. Like, yeah. I'm a very private person. And a lot of times, I mean, I'm saying this as an overthinker. I think a lot of times when the more information you give people, the more opportunity you give them to speculate and have comments. Right. And like, a lot of times, depending on, like, how impressionable you are, you can think that something is really, really great. You yeah. share it. And then people, yeah. like, have mad shit to say about right. it. And now it's like, now I'm second like, guessing. Like, yeah. oh. When it was something <laughs> that really, like, made me happy. So I can definitely understand that. But one thing you're not private about is your man, your man, your man. Okay, your man, your man. Your man, your man, your man. Because um, a lot of the time, I feel like women hide their men from social media. They do. Especially, like, if they have, like, a name, if they they yeah. have, like, a lot of traffic, like, going to their pages. But you're very open about your relationship. Yeah. Y'all look so cute. Thank you. Um, How has that been? Like, having, like, being in a relationship while, like, maintaining your career Oh, I mean, like, we're, that's, like, my best friend, you know okay. what I'm saying? So, okay. like, everything, I, I tell him everything, like, even shit that I'm sure he probably don't even want to hear. Like, I really, mm-hmm. I'm very open with him, and I think that also doesn't, I think that also, like, translates to why I don't feel the need to tell social media everything, because mm-hmm. a lot of these bitches do not have friends, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, they go and tell the gram all their business, and, like, I just tell my man, you know, right. or I'll just tell my friends, you know, mm-hmm. so... Um, he's great though. Like we're we're about to make five years next year. Wow, We've been together for a to very y'all. long time. This is my longest relationship ever. So Wow. Yeah, yeah. that's that's fire. Yeah. That's real fire. But he also produces for me. So like Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like he produced half my album. He produced all of Who Cares. Like he yeah. Oh wow. Yeah, so that, that. you see, so there are situations where you can mix business and pleasure Absolutely. and it works very well. Absolutely. I love that. As long as y'all have an understanding standing of like this is what it is Mm -hmm. you can absolutely mix business with pleasure and that's also like i think it's good that he works or like he's in the industry because i don't know if you watch rap shit have you ever seen rap shit no but um one of them like as she was like going up her boyfriend was like coming to the events with her but you could tell that he was just like getting real bitter like real Uh, standoffish and eventually like he had his little hissy fit and like went off but he wasn't ready to adapt to that lifestyle. Yeah. So having somebody who's already in the lifestyle yeah. who can understand, I'm yeah. sure it goes a very long way. He definitely understands. Um, right. Something else I wanted to talk to you about was um, your activism. Because you use your platform for a lot of good. Mm-hmm. Um, I know during the pandemic, you were like raising money for bail like for people to get like bail yeah Yeah, yeah, yeah. and then you did like the poland spring with the water project for the water crisis in africa which is so 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 dope once again like i was saying before i don't really feel like a lot of people use their platforms for like good so shout out to you for that um what else do you see yourself doing if anything for it doesn't even only have to be the community but for just people in general like how would you like to use your platform Um, I definitely am very passionate about um, people being in or getting people out of jail that serve um, nonviolent sentences, especially Mm -hmm. for marijuana related um, crimes. Mm -hmm, That's mm -hmm. something I just did um, maybe like a couple months ago. We were I did a collab with Edie Parker, who does um, they have a foundation where they you know, they pay off bails Mm -hmm. and they raise money to pay off bails for people incarcerated for weed. I don't think anybody should be in jail for weed. Something that people Especially when they let people get off scot-free for doing a lot more than smoking a little dope. Yeah. But that's a different conversation. So I definitely um, am going to be using my platform to raise more awareness to that. Mm -hmm. And also, like, sometimes, I'm not going to lie to you, sometimes I just be giving money away like if someone is like what? Girl, let me get a i'm dollar. not gonna lie like, <laughs> not giving like, money away. No, during the pandemic like <laughs> i used to get on twitter i was like yo who need an eighth and then like I'm i would just weak. send people like 30 dollars 40 dollars <laughs> here and there like abby for president oh i love that yeah you giving out free money girl yeah Listen. that was that was back then um <laughs> 
<laughs> no one. Yeah, don't come I'm my not way. gonna be buying eighths anymore. But <laughs> I do have um, some weed collabs coming out, so I will be giving out Ooh, eighths. Okay. So yeah, we love That's that. That's dope. Okay. Yeah, we love that. Now, are you doing this? Like, are you hosting any events? Are you like, or is this just gonna like we gotta wait around and see when it comes about? The weed stuff? Yeah. Oh, um, so I think we're doing an event. The first, I think we're doing one in D.C. Mm. And then um, I should have some available at my release party, which is next Friday. So okay. We, we should have some. D.C., you out of town. Yeah, I can we should, around. Yeah, That's we cool. should have some. All right. So now... What else can we expect coming from you? We got this dope ass project that's coming mm-hmm. out. What other things do you want to get into? Anything outside of music? Yes, I wanna I wanna start acting this year. I okay. feel like Abby the I actress. feel like that's my next like step. Like I wanna do some sort of film. I like to um I like to write scripts. Like I write scripts and stuff okay, like that. Okay, okay, so, okay. Like, I wanna do like a short film. Okay. Stuff like that. Like we definitely gotta connect because that's like what I do for work. Like I really? develop scripts. Yes. I know that's right. So we got, that's so dope. What kind of stuff like would you wanna like what kind of stuff would you see yourself in? Is it like comedy? Yeah. Cause you de- you got definitely give me like yeah, comedy. Yeah, I like I like I don't know if I could be like a serious actor. Like like hmm. like like Denzel, like oh I, no, yeah, yeah, no, that's very serious. Like, you took it to day, the extreme, like, like yeah, like but, I don't know about that. But you might be able to like switch it up maybe, here and there. It's just I have to kind of take myself out of being me, like to mm-hmm. do serious acting. You know, mm-hmm. like I could always be like my goofy self anytime. You know, if mm-hmm. you cast me to be the funny friend, of right. course I'll do that. But like, I think. It's just me getting over myself yeah. a little bit. Because I feel like you have... Just to do anything, though, you have to kind of get over yourself a little bit, you know? So, yeah. Okay. Well, we will definitely be looking forward to that. Would you do, like, web shows, anything like that? No. Like, web shows, like... Like a web series. Well, I, I be on Twitch a lot. Like, I do, Okay. Yeah. Like, I, I play games on Twitch, so I like to play video games. Oh, that's games, dope. So, like, yeah, I be on there. Okay, you definitely, fans. like... Yeah, I like You Twitch. have an expanded network. Yeah. I think I, that's really, really dope. What kind of games do you play? Oh, my gosh. I play all different types of shit. I play, um, like, Sims. You, love Sims. I love, love the Sims. Sims. Love Sims. Once mods. I discovered the mods... Yo, that's, oh. what I was, that's what I was just saying. I love them. I love a good mod, Once, and I... I don't know what you was about to say, no. but I my I first the, mod. Once I discovered they had the the wicked. Whims. That's exactly what I was about to say. Wicked Whims was the first mod that I yes. ever downloaded. I, I was like, yeah. ooh. like ooh, y'all not supposed to be doing but, this. But I, I'm like, ooh, but I wasn't watching. Yeah, not my Sims, not my Sims section right now. Oh my god, for y'all that don't know, yeah, check it out. Yeah. Sims, Sims got me through um quarantine, honestly. Yeah, me too. I, I was up definitely a strip club in Sims. I opened up a Prada store in Sims. Yes, yeah. living very much vicariously yeah. through all of my sims yeah. shout out to sims yeah i love sims <laughs> um anything else anything else that we can look forward to or anything that we didn't get to touch on that you want to talk about i don't think so i feel like you covered every base like this is the most in-depth Aye. interview i think i've had in a long time um, oh period yeah, <laughs> yeah i know that's right um and it's crazy because i feel like we still have mad stuff to talk about but there's always something to talk about and there's always time to come back okay so at post project i'll come back post project we're gonna have a catch up see how everything is going how the project is yes. received. we're definitely gonna be in tune though growing pain okay may 22nd may 22nd Make sure y'all check that out um yeah any last words before we wrap this up girl um stream growing pains may 22nd <laughs> That's it. Yeah, stream going pain. <laughs> Follow me. Yes. Abby Jasmine oh. everywhere. Mm-hmm. That's it. Period. Well, thank you for coming. Thank it's you been for such a good me. conversation this with you. Fun. Very, very fun. Looking forward to hearing the album. Thank y'all as always for tuning in. We will see y'all on the next interview. Woo.